thank you, thank you, thank you deeply for coming out today. As uh, you know, Peggy and Mike and Hassan have said, it's all about your work, and it is so incredibly generous of you to give up, you know, one of the last Saturdays in the summer, and we really do appreciate it. It really makes a difference. Um, I, I just want to talk briefly about C51. Uh, you know, it, it's hard to imagine the utter cynicism of the Harper government in introducing that bill right after the attack on Parliament last fall. You know, people were in a state of shock and horror at what had happened. And the Harper government, in just total cynicism, brought in that legislation in the name of fighting terrorism. But the legislation had nothing effectively to do with fighting terrorism. The, the measures to do with fighting terrorism were essentially all covered elsewhere. What it was about was clamping down on enemies, enemies of the Harper government. What it effectively does uh, is give the Harper government effectively a secret police force that it can use without hardly any supervision against its enemies. And let's not be under any illusion about who those enemies are. Essentially, in, in, nothing to do with enemies of the country, enemies of the Harper government, which includes anybody that pretty much has a progressive <laughs> thought in this country. Uh, you know, and certainly environmentalists, certainly labor, organized labor is very much on that list. So it's very exciting that among other things, we are here today to be canvassing against C-51. And we, of course, we've seen that not only did the Conservatives bring it in, but the Liberals, in utter cynicism, supported it because initially it looked popular. I just want to also quickly add to uh, what Peggy and Mike have said you know, about the, the whole situation now where Trudeau, I guess, in some kind of desperation, is trying to look like he's to the left of the NDP. Uh, essentially, the media is cooperating with this because they love the idea of the story that the NDP is moving to the right. In fact, I ask you, what is to the right about a national child care program? This is something that is desperately needed in this country and is, is the obvious next progressive step to take in our, uh, you know, in our list of social programs. It would be such, as Hassan was saying, such an important development in terms of providing for the needs of Canadian families and also giving women a choice about career options that they are utterly denied if they don't have a, a, a viable childcare option. What is regressive or what is not progressive about strengthening public health care, strengthening public pensions, reviving a national housing program that was killed by the Liberals, strong investment in infrastructure, including reliable funding for public transit and green technology. These are all incredibly progressive programs. And of course, as others have mentioned, the $15 an hour federal minimum wage would be an incredibly important step towards redressing the whole problem we've seen in the last few decades, where increasingly all the economic gains simply go to the top. That's not due to some kind of law of nature. That's due to the system favoring those at the top. And by, by Setting a minimum, creating a minimum wage at $15 an hour federally, that would be an incredibly important step to setting a national standard that would put pressure on the provinces to, to increase their own minimum wages. And, there, and in, in doing so, would put pressure throughout the economy to push up wages. Because as the minimum wage goes up, other wages go up in order to keep the differential. Uh, that is so crucial to attracting skilled workers. So that would be an incredibly important step. And of course, the NDP would also reverse the fierce anti 
anti-labor legislation of the Harper government, Bill uh, C-377, mm -hmm. plus bring in new legislation to strengthen collective bargaining and to outlaw scab labor service. <laughs> agenda and the truth is we are willing to pay for that we are not the party that goes into deficit we pay for it and we've been very open about this we pay for it by increasing corporate taxes and by ta clamping down on offshore tax havens and by taking away subsidies for oil and gas and, this is my f personal favorite, and by removing the special tax break for CEO stock <laughs> options. <Exactly. laughs> by the way, give our top CEOs, on average, a tax break worth, get this, $6.6 .6 million each. Wow, each. Wow. Wow. Um, so, so we have a progressive program and we are going to pay for it, so we're not going to go into deficit. In fact, we have a spectacular record on deficits when the finance department put together a chart to show all the, all the parties, federally and provincially, over the last few decades and measured them in terms of balanced budgets. Amazingly, contrary to all the hype about tax and spend and deficit-ridden NDP so-called, uh, it turns out the NDP, this is the finance department said this, had the best record on balanced budgets. And so that's why I am personally as a progressive extremely proud to be running for the NDP. I think Tom O'Kear said it in such an inspiring way when he said, he said, I come from the school of Tommy Douglas who, who had 17 balanced budgets in a row while introducing Medicare. Paramount <laughs> Care is going to bring that same principle and that same vision to a national child care program, and I'm really excited about that. Thank you so much for coming.